Hello, my name's Tim Gamble, uh, also known as Fate of Black Light Art. I'm from the northwest of England, a place called Stockport, just outside Manchester. Uh, I'm 39 years old, I've got a beautiful family, a girlfriend called Lauren, and a little boy called Riley. Uh, unfortunately, light painting isn't my main source of income. I wish it was, but that isn't the case. Uh, I'm actually a purchaser for uh, an office supplies company by day, uh, and then at night, then I'm a full-time light painter. So I got into light painting about well, be five years in April, um, when I first came across light painting. Uh, I originally, I bought a DSLR uh, to take pictures of my young son and I was sick of taking pictures on my mobile phone and the quality was no good and it was like these are important memories that I want to capture here and I want them to look back at them and be sort of proud of them. Uh, so I bought a book on um, digital photography <clears throat> and there was a small section in there uh, called light painting about half a page or so. Uh, and this sort of sparked a sort of interest. Um, I've been kind of into landscape photography, more of the long exposure side of it, so like long exposures of water, getting a bit of cloud movement, but then I saw light painting and that was it straight away. Onto Google on my phone, typed in light painting, and then up popped Dennis Smith and his uh, story, The Ball of Light. Um, and I was just completely sort of transfixed on the screen and like hanging on his every word uh, and just looking at the resulting images from him going out at night. I just knew like at that very moment that that was the sort of scene that I wanted to get into. It was like, it was like just the coolest thing I've ever seen. And I'd, uh, I'm so sort of grateful and I've told Dennis this on many occasions, so grateful that I sort of found that video because maybe without it or without that book, that, well, I definitely wouldn't be sat here now doing this. I probably wouldn't even know what light painting was and that would be a shame because basically all my other sort of passions uh, and loves, apart from the sort of important ones like friends and family, have just completely fallen by the wayside. Uh, and light painting has just taken over. And after four and a half years, nearly five years, my passion hasn't decreased. So I, I just can't, I think that's it now. I think I'm just gonna love light painting until I pop off the earth. Uh, it's a mix of both really. Um, sometimes I'll be sat there just daydreaming about light painting and an idea will pop in my head and I'll think, right, it'll, be, it'll either be down to sort of maybe a piece of music that's playing or maybe just a thought that's gone through my head um, or a location that I see, maybe online or on the tele, television. Um, and I may take weeks or months to sort of plan it out. Uh, there are other times where I'll be somewhere and say uh, whatever I'm trying to achieve just isn't working uh, and instead of just trying for the like 10th time to try and nail a shot that probably won't work for the 10th time, I'll just change tact, just sort of taking my surroundings, seeing something that I might be able to work with. So it's pretty much, I'd say probably about a 50-50 split between the two. Uh, sometimes I'll go there with an idea already and other times I'll just turn up and something will pop in my head while I'm there. Uh, quite often uh, shooting with like Chris Thompson, um, I'm sure it works both ways as well, sort of it, it, he'll be doing a shot and it, while we're in the middle of a shot it'll give me an idea of like something that I'd like to try. Um, I know that's happened a few times and I think vice versa as well. Um, so yeah, it can be, it can be instantaneous, and quite often the instantaneous ones, the ones that I've not thought about and obsessed about for sort of weeks, turn out to be sort of the better images, uh, in my opinion. Um, definitely better received by others, 
Um, so yeah, maybe less planning and more improvising on location. Uh, I'm currently, well, I'm now on my third 365 project. Uh, I did two back to back and then I even started another one last year but I think it got up to like number 176 and I was just like, I'd compl I just had enough of it. I was starting to fall out of love with it. I wasn't, I didn't think my images were sort of, they were a bit slapdash and I, just, I sort of lost a lot of my mojo with my photography. So I just decided to knock it on the head, stop it there. Um, and I think the break, the sort of five month break that I had did me a lot of good. Um, then unfortunately at the end of last year I dropped my camera and my lens and they both ended up breaking so I had to get myself a new camera and some new lenses and um, then I decided to start another 365 project so I'm on I think day 26 today um, and the reason, I, the reason I'm doing another one now is basically just so I can get to grips with using my camera um, sort of it makes life a lot easier when you can sort of find the different buttons in the dark and it just becomes like an extension of your body uh, and I just want to learn how to get the best out of the camera so yeah I figured doing another 365 was the way forward and it also it pushes you into other areas of photography that you might not sort of usually venture into so for instance um, I'll have done sort of work with sort of flash guns and modifying light, which is then I've found sort of transferable into light painting. So say macro, you can introduce macro elements into your light painting work. If you're doing portraiture lighting, you can sort of bring that across into your light painting work as well. So yeah, it's, it's all good practice and um, probably 70 80 percent of the time I'm happy doing a 365 and then when just either I can't be bothered because I'm tired or for us or my idea isn't working for the night or I'm not happy with the image then yeah then it's not fun particularly but if you haven't done one I would recommend that you do because yeah I think it has brought my sort of overall photography on sort of leaps and bounds so yeah do a 365 Oh, uh, my inspiration comes from absolutely everywhere, uh, everywhere and anywhere. I just keep, I just constantly keep my eyes and ears open. I can either be listening to a song and there'll be a verse in there that just sort of resonates with me and sort of evokes either a feeling or a thought process. Uh, that will make me want to create a light painting image about it. Uh, the work of others, obviously other people doing light painting or just photography on the whole. You'll, I'll see something, I'll think, oh, well, that would look really good in this particular setting or... Uh, there's no, uh, I can't really say definitively that there's any one, there's no one place where I get my inspiration from. It's either people or something on television or sort of an emotion I'm feeling or I just want to sort of express it using using light painting. So yeah, it, it can come from absolutely anywhere and at any time. I, like, I've woken up some mornings and just had, I must have been dreaming about light painting which wouldn't surprise me. And yeah, I've got, got an idea from that. Or I can just be, like one of my favourite images, I was just sat in my front room and my little boy had a tent, uh, like a play tent that looked like a like miniature circus tent. And I was just sat there one night, I think that was on my first 365, and I was sat down watching telly thinking, oh, I don't know what photo I'm going to take tonight. Uh, uh, so I was looking at his dome tent, and I was like, oh, I wonder if my dome tool will fit in there. So I got my dome tool out. And sure enough, it fit in. So yeah, that's where you just see, see an object. You can be out in a shop and see some something that sort of emits light, some kind of I don't know, kids' toy or something. And 
yeah, if you feel like I can base an entire shot around this one thing that I've found. So yeah, inspiration can come from everywhere. This is by far the hardest question of all, uh, just because there are that many people who sort of, who were my favourite, because I just love light painting so much, but obviously I've got to choose three. So number one, I've, I'm choosing this chap because he was the guy who sort of, he was my sort of entry point into light painting and that's Dennis Smith. Um, yeah, his work is just, it's like, like take the perfect landscape sort of night shot, just exposed to perfection. And then just the most spherical, beautiful, symmetrical orbs. It just, yeah, it never gets old looking at Dennis's work. I love it. And I love him for sort of introducing me to light painting. Yeah, it's, it's like really appreciated. Uh, number two, well, I've got to go with this guy because he, he, he has, the, I see there's an awful lot of his work in my own work and that's L.E.D. Eddie. Um, maybe not quite as, uh, he, he's not quite as prolific as he used to be, I'm sure he'd agree. Um, but yeah, back in the day when I first started out looking at the streams of people like him, it was just sort of like, that was what I wanted to do. That's the, That was sort of the area of light painting I wanted to get into sort of big time, like the backlit silhouettes. Uh, I know my, my, my work has an awful lot of backlit silhouettes in it. Um, but yeah, the guy's sort of breadth and depth of work and the quality of it all is just was just just blew my mind then and it still blows my mind now it's just it's like as close to perfection as you can possibly get in my opinion yeah he i wish he'd get his camera out at night more but i can see where kind of where he's coming from that he sort of he's been there and he's done that and he's on the different things now uh thankfully still with a little bit of light painting sort of for us to uh, drool over so led Eddie do more light painting uh, the third one. Now the third one is, uh, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, but I'm probably not, is Zhao Yang. Zhao Yang? Sorry. Uh, yeah, just every what, every one of the shots is just like a jaw dropper um, and a commitment to sort of traveling just around the world to see somewhere I don't know, the the one that sort of really impresses me and really makes me feel bad about myself is the fact that she's been with Mark O'Neill into Megatron, a tunnel uh, that runs underneath Sheffield City Centre. Now, it'd probably take me about an hour to drive there and I've not been because I'm too lazy. <laughs> Charles come from, from China, from the other side of the world, and has been there because it's such an epic location and yeah that's that's sort of only the beginning of why I love her work so much sort of a, a passion and a drive to go to these places and travel travel the world to see just awesome spots but not only does she go to these incredible places the lighting the composition like the story that's being told is just I've, I've never, she hasn't got a bad shot in my opinion, I've not, I've not seen one that I've gone, no, that's not very good. Like every single one's just bang, 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 just amazing. So yeah, those are me three. There are so many other people who, uh, who, uh, who are my favourites as well. But yeah, though, that, they're my top three, I think. Uh, I'd really, really like to go to like an ice can say to Iceland or not I don't exactly I don't even know where they are <laughs> but I know I've not got enough money to go and see it but where I'd really like to go is to like to an ice cave uh, I think the ones where it's had what it has water running through it at times so it sort of sculpts the inside 
sort of all smooth, smooth and different angles and different levels of translucency. I just think playing around in one of those with a torch and just working on different lighting techniques, I just think you could create, uh, could create something just, yeah, amazing in a place such as that. Um, whether or not I'll ever go and do it, I don't know. But fingers crossed I will. Uh, there was one night that sort of leaps to mind where I was out with Chris Thompson. Uh, I think it was the gatehouse of Road Chabby. Um, and it was pretty much, it was a good 20, 25 minute walk from where we parked. There didn't seem to be any houses close by. We didn't really see anybody else there while we were there. And it was, I think it was probably March. It was like, there was like frost on the ground. It was about half past one in the morning. It was freezing. And all of a sudden, from outside the gatehouse, I just hear this sort of, Whoa! I was like, <laughs> what's going on here? So I sort of stick my head out and have a look. And there's a guy there with, took his top off and he's sort of swinging his top round his head just screaming at the top of his voice at half one in the morning in the middle of nowhere uh, and it was freezing cold so yeah I'll, I'll never forget that when I when I first started all my work was straight out of the camera sort of JPEG straight out of the camera um, because that's what the people, well, the majority of the people who I sort of, who inspired me and who I looked up to, that's what they were doing. So that's what I ended up doing. But after a while, and it probably started maybe midway through my three, first 365, um, was I was doing other types of photography where it did require me to do some post-processing. And then that then I started thinking, well, that, that particular shot, if I sort of boosted the shadows a bit, uh, knocked the highlights back a bit, then it looked better. And also, my hard drive was getting swamped with files because uh, I was shooting JPEG and RAW sort of like every night. And some nights I'd be shooting 250 photos. So the hard drive, it just became a real pain to sort of sift through everything. So in the end, I stopped shooting JPEG at all and just started shooting RAW all the time. And due to that, something that I've found is if you, when you import a RAW file in a Lightroom, it seems to just flatten everything out. It sort of makes that zeroes everything and all the life gets sucked out of it. So it wasn't even as if I could just drag, like import a RAW file in a Lightroom, convert it into a JPEG and then upload it because it, it, it wouldn't have looked as good as it did on the back of my camera. Um, so yeah, I do, I do minimal sort of tweaks. So it'll be like highlights, clarity. Sometimes if I'm using a, a lens that's like giving a kind of a distortion I don't like, I'll sort of tweak the sort of lens profile. Um, I'll never sort of layer in for me no, I, I won't do that. And if ever, like my new camera now has got a double exposure mode, would I class it as light painting? Well, if both, say both parts of the double exposure are light painting, then it kind of is. But deep down, I feel like, no, I'm, I'm cheating here. That's it's not the way to do it. So... <clears throat> Where, where if, I've, if the time allows and I've got two tripods uh, and I have the inclination, then I will try and do it sort of all during a single long exposure. Um, but sometimes time doesn't allow, sometimes it will end up creating something that looks really cool and I think, well, at the end of the day, it's art, just do what you want. Don't don't really, as I say, it's no skin off my nose what other people do. If you want to use Lightroom to convert a RAW file, then happy days. If you want to do it JPEG straight out the camera with all of your camera settings zeroed out, then happy days. You crack on, you do that. Uh, <coughs> pardon me. I've never, I've never sort of layer images in Photoshop and then say this this is a light painting image. Um, I've, 
I definitely wouldn't post it in any light painting groups because I, I don't. I think even if you say this is a composite image, I, I think it. No, it's not. It's not light painting for me. Um, uh, but each to their own. You do what you like as long as you aren't misleading people and making them think that what you're doing is straight out of the camera. Um, then yeah, just crack on. There's. There's too much other stuff to think about rather than whether or not you, your photograph you've taken has come straight out of your camera or if you've run it through Lightroom. You know, don't, don't really bother me really either way. Well, I've said before, I've got a new camera. I've got a Sony a7 II uh, and I've just uh, recently started getting into buying sort of vintage, uh, vintage lenses for it. Um, I've covered quite a few angles with vintage, but the wider angles they tend not to be so hot uh, with the older stuff, especially in my price range anyway. So I've got a Samyang 14mm um, manual lens, uh, I've got an older uh, Samyang 50mm uh, 1.4 like that one. Um, Got a couple of tripods, light stands, flash guns, loads of torches, too many torches really. If there is such a thing, there's too many torches. Um, electric cigarette, that is used in a lot of my shots because it just provides the perfect sort of canvas to light up, especially for like a, a silhouette. Just brings instant drama, makes it stand out from the background. Uh, yeah, that's one of my favourite tools, is me B cigarette. Um, camera rotation tool, as I said earlier, yeah, can't fault it, that's me. Uh, if, if I'm struggling at night on a shot, uh, nothing's really working, I guarantee that I'll, if I did a 180 flip of something, it'll end up creating something that, I, that pleases me. So yeah, that, that's why the camera rotation tool is always in my bag. Uh, I've got a load of light painting good brushes gear. Uh, I've got a load of Heramiantas uh, gear as well. And just one of my favourites is just like rainbow rainbow card. So like holographic rainbow card. I love using that. Cardboard. I've got loads of cardboard. Uh, um, like black card that I cut out and, and stick to a frame for the, like the diorama sort of style work that I do sometimes. I really enjoy that. It's like being back at school, just like drawing out the pictures and cutting them out and sticking them in certain positions. I just love the fact that you, you're in complete control over the, the scene in those kind of images. Um, you say like, oh, I want to stick a tree there or I want to stick a bench there or I want the stars or the moon up there. Yeah, you can do whatever you want with cardboard. So I love doing that. Um, what other tools have I got? Uh, P I like um, in my word they get quite a lot of old PCs in and laptops that I like to take to bits and take the uh, the PCBs out of them. Like the the well, these things just happen to have hands. Those love these um, with my macro rings. Um, there's so much fine detail and there's so many sort of parts of it that are sort of if you shine a tight torch behind it, it it just beautiful green colour and loads of sort of different shapes. I don't know, that they just sort of I, I like using them a lot. Um what else have I got? Numerous gels if I see a, a shampoo that comes in like a funky coloured bottle then yeah I'll get that particular shampoo and then when it's finished I'll cut out sort of oblongs of the uh, of the plastic that can go in my gel holder for different just for different colours of lighting really it's, just, it's best to have too many gels and not enough because you can cover all bases then um, yeah I've got cupboards and drawers under the stairs office ah my favourite recent one is me we had a return at work for an office chair mat and they had a crack in it. But the company said they didn't want it back just to chuck it in the bin and I saw it. I was like, oh yeah, I'll be able to do something cool with that. So yeah, I've got two of them at home 
hiding behind the wardrobe out of the way from Lauren. Uh, yeah, I think I think Lauren shakes her head sometimes just because everywhere she looks, there are different bits of like painting paraphernalia. But I just can't help it and and like hoard it. So yeah, I've got loads of different random stuff. <laughs> Well, I can't say that there's just one thing that's the best. I'm going to split it into two. The first of which I'm going to say is the community. It's like all, all the other light paintings out there. You just seem to get an instant connection with people. If, if you like light painting, then nine times out of ten, they're going to be the kind of person who I like, who I would want to interact with or I would want to go to the pub and have a beer with. They just... Every time I've met up with anyone who likes light painting, it's just always the best time. And we're all just on the same wavelength. And yeah, I think that's it. The people, the other people who do light painting. Uh, and then the other thing that I like the most about being a light painter is just the creative release. I find when I'm not light painting or if like a couple of weeks pass and I, I haven't done any, I'll... My, my mood will worsen, it like it cheers me up, it makes me happy. Uh, and you get it, it if you sort of nail if you've got an idea for a shot and you nail it, and it's just you it finally gets unveiled on the back of your camera screen, and it's just like that. Oh, I love it, I'm just in love with it. Then the, there's a sort of a, almost like an adrenaline rush, a bit of a high that I've found in no other form of photography whatsoever. Only with light painting, I think it's the fact you've got to you've got to wait for your camera to show you what you've actually done because a lot of it's like you, you don't really know how it's going to turn out on many an occasion. So yeah, when it gets when it comes to the, the final sort of release and you see what it is and you get that rush and you're like, oh yeah, I nail that one. Yeah, that feeling is just uh, is amazing. So yeah, just being creative. I like being creative. I always have. But I've, I've often struggled with ways of being creative uh, before light painting came along. But now, yeah, I've, I have the perfect sort of conduit to be creative through. So, yeah, people and creativity. Uh, yeah, creative blocks, I get them all with like probably every day, really. Uh, and they become more... Uh, you notice them more doing a 365 because you're forced like on a night where I can't really be bothered to get my camera out of its bag. I'll be, I'll be pacing around the house looking for something to photograph or looking for inspiration to come to me. It very rarely sort of happens that way, especially in the if you're in that kind of frame of mind where you don't, where you just think you haven't got any ideas often the best way i've found to sort of get around that is just to get the even if you're setting off in no particular direction with a camera just get it out get it on the tripod and just start faffing about and start waving lights about in different ways eventually you'll do some of oh that looks pretty cool i'll can maybe introduce that as maybe a texture to a shot or I, that can be the main event of the shot and I can add something else to it. Uh, so I do get creative blocks but they, they tend to be overcome pretty quickly because I just get my camera out of the bag. I've learned, just get the camera out of the bag and just start taking photos of whatever and something will evolve over the course of the evening. So yeah, if you're struggling, just get your camera out and just start messing about and then eventually something will come your way. I don't, I don't pay much thought to it really. Um, I, 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 from a kind of a selfish perspective, I don't really mind where it goes. As long as there are people who are still doing it, I don't care if there's a million people doing it, I don't care if there's 20 people doing it. Um, I just hope that, that, that the community is still out there. And I think it will be because the community is like, one of my favourite things about light painting is the sense of community. Like, it's if you'd have told me like ten years ago that you're gonna meet people on the internet and go out into a go meet them in a tunnel in the middle of nowhere without really knowing who they are, and it's sort of I don't know. 
I think it's if you like light painting especially you tend to be of like the, the same kind of per, a person on the whole I've found from pretty much everyone I've ever met there's not been a bad one amongst a lot of them and everybody's everybody online everybody's sort of online seems to be friendly and respectful so yeah I just hope it carries on in that that sort of a vein um, as I say I don't I'm not really too too interested in where it goes. If if it got massive, like really massive, then yeah, it's happy days. Uh, I'm sure people would benefit from it. But it depends what what you want to get out. I like painting. I just like doing light painting, just because it is a creative release. It, it relaxes me, and it's just what I love to do. I'm sure there are others out there who do it as maybe their main source of income and they w maybe want it to go massive so like there's more exposure and there's more to be sort of gained from it but that, that's not for me. Be, be, I, I, friends often say to me or family like oh you, you really want you want to push yourself you really want to try and make make some money out of it but I'm like mm, I, I don't really want to. I don't mind, I'll sell a print every now and again, or I did some books a while ago, I sold some of them. That's that's an added bonus. I think the second that you monetize something, and and the, therefore then the pressure increases, I don't, I think it'd sap all the fun out of it, and I don't want that to happen. I'd rather have no money from light painting whatsoever and continue to love it as much as I do now. just you just get out there well maybe not even out there just get your camera out get find yourself somewhere dark and just get creative uh, inevitably or sort of generally I've, I've, this is what it was like with me and i'm sure it is the same for for others that you start off and you'll see the work of other people you're like wow i want to do that then you need to make sort of the conscious decision, well, yeah, I've, I've done that now, now I want to go in my own sort of direction, my own route. And um, yeah, pick, I think Ellie, LED Eddie said to me when I first started, he said, uh, yeah, don't follow the crowd, but do your own thing. And it's like the best advice ever, because like, yeah, you don't want to just end up being the same as everybody else. You want to try and be try and be different just be creative just and never switch off your sort of your light painting brain all the way where it be you're in the shops if you're out somewhere and you drive past something just take it all in just keep your brain switched on and yeah and and go to places like optical nirvana the group or not called optical nirvana on Flickr. <clears throat> and spent yeah days and days just scrolling through looking at the pictures and just try to break down in my head how they were all created and just sort of looking in awe uh, especially the ones that I, I, I couldn't sort of break down and still to this day some of them I, I, I still don't know but that's the beauty of it I, that's what I love about it it's just just amazing so yeah do, just do light painting